Hey, Canucks fans. Welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Wednesday, April the 3rd. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take all in one take. The Canucks fans, go home happy as the Vancouver Canucks win their final home game of their season, game number 80 of the 82-game season, with a 4-2 victory over the visiting San Jose Sharks last night. It's a Sharks team that's str- uh, kind of stumbling into the playoffs. Not sure how they're going to match up against a Vegas Golden Knights team who is playing very well hitting the playoffs. But alas, the Vancouver Canucks were able to defeat these Sharks. And like I said, a good mood in Rogers Arena. A very hard-fought game. And that was evident, uh, evident by the three Canucks goals, three of the four Canucks goals that the Canucks scored. Now, the first one was less than two minutes into the game. It was Bo Horvat on a really nice play. Um, you know, ch- chasing down a loose puck. It was actually a really good chip in by Erickson. Horvat chased the puck down into the corner, beat Brent Burns there, then put it through his legs, a blind pass to Tanner Pierce in the slot, one-timer right in front of Martin Jones in the net. Then San Jose Sharks scored their two goals at the end of the first, you know, in the middle part of the first period. One on a, you know, where they kind of dominated the shift, actually, unfortunately, against Pedersen, Besser, Berchi, Hughes, and, and Hutton. San Jose using their size to, to get, create that goal. And then the second goal was a power play goal. No chance for Demko in that one. Score the second period, and then in the third period, Tanner Pearson scores the second of the game. When Erickson, by the way, Erickson seems to get like two or three um, either breakaways or or good chances to the net. Doesn't bury a lot of them, but Erickson at least is creating, creates an opportunity uh, with a break in, comes in, and then Pearson goes and je- uh, shoves the puck in from underneath Martin Jones's glove. Originally it was waved off, then it was real good goal. San Jose challenge, that challenge was defeated. So Pearson scores another good goal again by going to the crease. And then the third goal by Marcus Granlin. It was a shot from the point, bounced around a bit off the goalie, off the post. And then Granlin established a uh, position on Brent Burns and was able to knock the puck in as it was rolling across the goal line. A uh, really good, gritty goal by Marcus Granlin. So the two Pearson goals and the Marcus Granlin goal all scored from either right in the slot or in the crease itself, showing that the Canucks were indeed battling as their theme for the, for the uh, season suggests. They were battling hard, going to the net, and they were rewarded. And then Troy Stetcher caps the game with his 200-foot empty netter right in the middle of the net. A really nice, uh, you know, Good heads up play by Troy Stetcher. Canucks win 4 2. Like I said, send all the fans home happy. Demko played well. Luke Shen got another scrap standing up for his teammates. And uh, Quinn Hughes, you know, average game, not too noticeable, but he's not hurting the team either. So overall, a good game for the Vancouver Canucks. Tanner Pearson with his with his two goals, of course. I'm going to talk about him in a second. The Canucks also announced their year end awards. And they weren't rocket science, but I did go four for four in predicting them. I cor- uh, correctly predicted that Jacob Markstrom would win MVP, Pedersen would win Most Exciting Player, Alex Ether would win Best Defenseman, and Antoine Roussel, the injured Antoine Roussel, would won um, uh, Most uh, Unsung Hero. And then Jacob Markstrom, in one that I didn't predict, also won Most th- uh, Three Star Selections, which makes sense given that he was the MVP. So again, went four for four. I know many of you did as well. But I think with that luck, with those uh, with those odds or that that streak, the Canucks should send me to the draft lottery next Tuesday. I'm sure I can't I can't do any worse than what we what's happened in the past few seasons. The other thing about um, Antoine Roussel, I read in Jason Botchford's uh, the Athletics that Antoine Roussel is going to have six to nine month recovery from his torn ACL, which is really unfortunate. That means he probably won't be playing until the end of this year, November, December, as opposed to September, October which uh, sucks for him, sucks for the team, but nothing you can do about it aside from hope that he, and that he recovers quickly and fully. So that's for Anton Roussel. So again, Markstrom, MVP, Pedersen, most exciting player, Edler, best defenseman, Roussel, unsung hero. Let's talk about Tanner Pearson, an, another unsung hero of sorts. In 17 games with the Canucks since coming over at the trade deadline, he has seven goals, two assists, and nine points. When you extrapolate that over a 82-game season, presuming full health for those 82 games, playing all 82 games, it's 33 goals and 9 assists for 42 points. That's really good production, whether you call that a, uh, you know, a bottom-end second line or a top-end third line. I've said before, and I said it on trade deadline when we got him, I really like Tanner Pearson. I liked him when he was with the Kings. I know he struggled when he was with Pittsburgh. I read that he was injured for a lot of time he was there. So maybe we are seeing with this Canucks Tanner Pearson the Pearson that we, you know, we saw two or three years ago with the Kings when he was putting up 40, 45 point seasons. Because like I said, what he's done so far extrapolates to a 42 point season here. 
Um, I don't know if it's going to be the discrepancy of like that 33 goals to to nine assists, basically a three and a half to one ratio. Maybe it, it comes down a little bit closer to even, but I think in his career statistics, Tanner Pearson does indeed have more goals and assists. And we can see why. He has a nose for the net. He's not afraid to get smoked as he goes to the front of the net because he's a big body. Like he's he's not like massive, but he's not uh, small and thin either. So he's, he's kind of broad and he's not afraid to get to the front of the net and get his nose dirty, so to speak. He's got a good release, um, a good shot. We've seen it in the shootouts. We've seen it, you know, during the games, of course. And um, I, think he, I think he just has a smart, good hockey IQ. And he plays, he plays well with Horvat, another guy who's got a good high IQ. Uh, I said uh, he's got a good high IQ. Horvat has a good hockey IQ as well. And you see, Horvat doesn't always have to be the one rushing the net. He can be, Horvat is an underrated passer, and we saw it last night. Horvat can make plays if he has skilled wingers. So maybe Horvat and Pearson is a combo that we see next season. I'm not sure if Erickson's going to stick there. I can see Vertanen getting a shot up there, maybe even Berchi or any uh, free agent. Uh, winger that the Vancouver Canucks do indeed sign but it's good to see Horvat and Pearson playing with a lot of chemistry it's good to see Pearson having a really positive effect and he also he can obviously with his offensive skill he can play on the power play but he also can be used on the penalty kill as well not the fastest skater ever but he's smart he's got good hands and we've seen all really really good things from Tanner Pearson since he's been here and he seems like he likes to be here so it's great and you remember it all comes together Tanner Pearson was traded for Eric Goodbranson, but we hardly missed him because Luke Shen, another midseason acquisition, has stepped up and has done what really we wanted Eric Goodbranson to do. Be steady, be safe, make the smart play, stand up for his teammates, drop the gloves once in a while, and hit people. He's done all six of the things very well since he's been here and truly has made that trade even more uh, you know, uh, more of a win for the Vancouver Canucks in that we got Tanner Pearson, who I just talked for three minutes about why I like, we, we got rid of Eric Goodbranson, who many people didn't like. And we have Luke Shen, a cheaper version of Goodbranson, yet he's doing better than Goodbranson, arguably, than Goodbranson did when he was here. So something to think about going forward. Is Luke Shen a top six? Maybe not. But he, I, I love him as a number seven or number eight. or I, uh, He's fine as a number seven or even a bottom six, maybe as a number six. But I could see him slotting in in the six-seven role next season, depending on what happens on the in the off season. All right, Canucks fans, that's all I got for you today. Got to get to work. But I wanted to talk about a quick recap of the game, quick recap of the four major awards that the Canucks um, presented last night to their players. And then, of course, uh, Tanner, a bit of a Tanner Pearson appreciation post. We'd love to read your comments below, whether you want to talk about the game, you want to talk about the awards, or you want to talk about Pearson and or Shen and what they've, made, what they've meant for this team since they come over. The Canucks next play in Nashville, their penultimate game of the season. You know I'm going to use that word tomorrow. Nashville on Thursday, St. Louis on Saturday to wrap up the season. And then draft party, uh, sorry, draft lottery on Tuesday. And then we have the off season, we have the draft, we have free agency. We got a lot to look forward to in the next two or three months. But for now, leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy your day, a rainy day in Vancouver, but enjoy it nonetheless. And we'll see you tomorrow, Vancouver and Nashville, game number 81, penultimate. God bless and go Canucks go.